What's up guys, my name's Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. This past week was an eventful and a unique one as we got the release of iOS 16.2 Beta 3 along with a first of its kind update to the iPhone and iPad. So in this episode, we're going to talk about that update along with some additional features and changes found in iOS 16.2 Beta 3 and an update on the latest public release iOS 16.1.1. And then after covering the software, we're going to discuss how the USB-C port on the iPhone 15 and 15 Pro will differ, a huge update on Apple's mixed reality headset, how AirPods are much more powerful than we even realize, the insane amount of money that somebody just spent on Steve Jobs' worn sandals, and more. And as always, if you guys want to stay updated with all things Apple, make sure to click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss next week's episode. So let's first start by talking about some additional features and changes found in iOS 16.2 Beta 3. But before we do that, I do need to plug this wallpaper here because it is part of my brand new wallpaper pack velvet which just dropped today it did get released yesterday for channel members which if you are a channel member here on youtube you get all of my wallpaper packs for free this is my second wallpaper pack ripple was my first one you guys seem to love that one so hopefully you like this velvet one as much as that one i do have a lot more wallpaper packs planned as well so if you want to buy this wallpaper pack there are seven different color variations i will leave a link down in the description below again it is free for channel members and i get all of the wallpaper packs ever that i ever release for free so just keep that in mind it is a pretty good value in my opinion but anyways let's talk about what you're here for and that is the additional features and changes in 16.2 beta 3. So the first thing we need to talk about is the first ever rapid security response update. So Apple did push this out after releasing 16.2 beta 3. And this is what it looked like on the software update page. It just says iOS security response 16.2a. And you could see it was under 100 megabytes and it installed very quickly, like in one minute. Now, Apple did confirm that this was just a test update since it's the first time we've actually seen this feature in action. This, of course, is one of the brand new features introduced with iOS 16 as a way to rapidly push you know, security updates to users' iPhones without the need of a full-on software update. Now, what's interesting about this is if you go into your settings and go to General, About, and then tap on the build number, which, by the way, you can see it says 16.2a, and there so i'd assume for every you know update rapid security response update it's going to be like a b c however many there are before the next major version but anyways if you tap on that you can see right here we have this new section that says rapid security response and it shows that it includes improvements and bug fixes for your iPhone. Now you also get the option to remove this. And if we tap on remove, you do have to enter in your passcode and you can see it will remove that from your device. It will need to reboot. As you can see, it is preparing the removal right now. And here's the prompt you will see when you try to remove this security response. You have the option to restart now or it will count down from 10 and restart your device for you. And after that, you're not gonna have that update installed. Now we also have an additional music animation change here in beta two. So I showed you guys that we we have new animations for next back and play and pause as you can see those animations there are brand new you can see this is ios 16.1.1 on the left we do not get those animations like we do here on 16.2 but we have another new animation and that has to do with the lyrics. So I'm gonna play iOS 16.1.1 here on the left first. So you can see when we're in the view right here for the lyrics and we tap right there to bring up the now playing or the control buttons right there, you can see it's a very abrupt kind of animation. There's really no animation actually, but here in 16.2 beta three, take a look at that same animation here. You will see that it just kind of goes down and it comes up right there when we tap again to pull up those controls so it's a very minor change but it is something that's pretty noticeable after you see it for the first time and you go back and look how it used to be now something else that i wanted to mention has to do with live activity so if we go into our settings and go to tv and then down here to live activities this is a new feature right here the more frequent updates and what i found interesting with this is that if we go into the tv application here and we go to a game that is currently on so we have the heat NBA game right now, you will see that we have this follow button right there. If you tap on that, it will start that live activity right away. And if you go out, you will see it up there in the dynamic island or right here 
on your lock screen. Now, what I found interesting is that if you turn off the more frequent updates, take a look at this, it ends the live activity. And if you go back and try to enable it again, so we tap on follow, you get this prompt right here, which is new. So it says enable more frequent updates. TV needs the more frequent updates permission in live activity settings to enable accurate score and game information. And you can see Apple did forget to put a space there after score, which is pretty interesting. And that spelling mistake goes hand in hand if we go to our display and brightness down here and then to always on display. And you can see we do have the infamous now, thanks to Marquez, the infamous win right there. And I say infamous because he replied on Twitter with just win and a lot of people found it pretty funny. And by the way, speaking of these always on display options, I know a lot of people have asked me, is there actually a big difference in battery life when you disable the wallpaper and the notifications? And for me, I've been testing this quite a lot and I actually have noticed a difference in battery life, but only with wallpaper turned off. And that's the opposite of what I thought. I thought that not having notifications on the always on display would be the thing that saved the most battery. But at least for me, at least right now on beta three, I found that just having show wallpaper off is the main thing that had me save, you know, more battery life. It didn't drain my battery as much when I'm on the always on display. And I think that's better in general because I don't know, I think an always on display when you have the wallpaper, it's kind of distracting and it doesn't even look like an always on display. So I'm really glad that Apple added this feature. I think everybody with a 14 pro series, it, you know, should consider disabling the show wallpaper on the always on display. And then one major fix in beta three is for the stutter. When you would be in an application and you would go home, there would be a kind of very slight stutter kind of a lag when you would go back and it was mostly with first party applications at least for me some people had it with third party applications as well like twitter and you know other applications but i found that with first party applications that happened more but that has been resolved here in beta 3 i don't have any more stutter when going back to the home screen from an application and then speaking of ios 16.1.1 i did want to give a brief update on this as well but first there we go that wallpaper looks much better but anyway 16.1.1 is running fine for me for the most part now I am still using 16.1.1 on my main device I've not yet converted over to the 16.2 betas but you know I do like having the satellite connectivity feature available just in case something happened you know where I don't have signal it just kind of gives me more peace of mind than I even expected it to be and it has showed up a couple times in my status bar I will see the little satellite icon up there if I lose signal which is kind of just cool to see and I like that I didn't have to update to 16.2 for me to get that feature on my iPhone 14 Pro. And then as far as performance and battery life, while I'm on 6% right here, performance and battery life are pretty good. I mean, there's really no difference from 16.1 in my opinion. So I am still hoping for improved battery life over the next few months, over the next few major iOS 16 versions. I'm really hoping that we get back to iOS 15 levels soon. But of course, that it does come in due time once Apple kind of fixes all of the bugs. But overall, 16.1, you know, was the big upgrade here, not 16.1.1. So there's really not too much more to say on this update. It's probably the last time I'm going to mention 16.1.1 just because there's really nothing else to talk about at this point. However, I did want to mention some bugs that are occurring on both 16.1.1 and the latest iOS 16.2 beta. And the first one, actually the first two have to do with YouTube. So in YouTube, I'm getting a constant black screen on YouTube videos where I can still hear the audio, but I don't see any video and I have to close out of that video and click on it again to fix it. And I can actually see the video again. So that could be a YouTube issue. I'm not sure it could be an iOS issue, but I'm having that. I'm also having an issue with rotation in YouTube and the TV app, which makes me think it's not just a YouTube bug. So it kind of pump fakes me with the rotation direction. It goes the opposite way that it's supposed to go. And you can actually see there's another bug there where it kind of shows my wallpaper when I go into full screen. You see that? You can see the purple from my wallpaper here on 16.2 beta three. So that's a new bug that I just now realized happens. That has not happened before, but yet another bug in the YouTube application related to the video player. And then we have a few other bugs that I've talked about for the past few weeks. Like when you pull down on the control center, we have the lag with the home kit devices right there. Every time I pull it down, you can see kind of a delay with them. And if we pull down right here, you can see I can kind of do that delay just on command right here, which that's a bug that's still there on 16.1 through 16.2 beta three. But the performance and battery life on 16.2 beta three specifically is actually an improvement over betas one and two. Betas one and two had pretty much the same performance and battery life as each other, but beta three is a noticeable improvement in both performance 
and a little bit in battery life, but it's mostly just in performance because we have a lot of those issues with lag fixed and apps crashing fixed. I do have the issue with mail, but overall performance is a nice upgrade battery life, eh, it's still about the same. We're still hoping for improvements there. All right, so now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next up, it's going to be iOS 16.2 beta 4, and that should come next week on the week of the 21st. Apple has been loving these Tuesday releases, so the 22nd seems like a good bet. Now keep in mind, next week is Thanksgiving, so I'm sure that a lot of Apple employees will be off on that Thursday, maybe even that Friday. So it might be a short week for Apple, but I would still expect to see beta 4 early in the week next week. And then as far as the final public release for 16.2, that should come sometime in early to mid December. I'm thinking that it might get released on the week of the 12th, but time will tell. All right, so now let's move on to the latest Apple news. And let's start with the latest iPhone 15 rumors because we've been hearing about USB-C coming to the iPhone for years now, but it seems that the day is finally quickly approaching. But the thing is, not all iPhone models will be equal. So let me let Ming-Chi Kuo explain. He said this on Twitter, my latest survey indicates all 2023 new iPhones will abandon Lightning and change to USB-C, but only the 15 Pro and Pro Max will support the wired high-speed transfer and the regular 15 and 15 Plus will still support USB 2.0, the same as Lightning. I predict that 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max will support at least USB 3.2 or Thunderbolt 3. This spec upgrade means the wired transfer and video output user experience will significantly improve. So this is actually a much bigger difference than it might appear just talking about it because USB 2.0 transfer speeds are limited to 480 megabytes a second, while USB 3.2 supports speeds up to 20 gigabits a second. And Thunderbolt 3 supports data transfer speeds up to 40 gigabits a second. So that's a massive difference in wired data transfer speeds. But, you know, my question is how many average consumers are actually hooking up their device and transferring data to their computer anymore? I feel like everybody just uses iCloud and AirDrop these days. But still, this is an interesting move by Apple. And the fact that they're still using USB 2.0 in 2023 kind of reminds me of the story that we talked about in last week's episode, where Apple is focusing more on costs than they are on quality. And this kind of goes hand in hand with that report. Now, speaking of 2023, it could be a massive year for Apple if their long awaited mixed reality headset gets announced in the first half of the year, like we've been hearing about for a while now. So Mark Gurman has has fed us quite a bit of info about this headset. So we already know that it's going to be priced between two and three thousand dollars. It's going to pack a Mac level M2 chip that's going to power the new operating system, which is dubbed Reality OS and it will have industry leading cameras placed outside and inside of the device. This report also mentions that Reality OS will include mixed reality versions of core Apple apps like Messages, FaceTime, and Maps, and that the first version of the operating system, which is codenamed Oak, is wrapping up internally and should be ready for the new hardware next year. And as far as the official name for this headset, we've heard rumors and we've seen patent filings for Reality Pro and Reality One. So one of those two names is is likely what Apple is going to call this. And over the past few months, there have been several job listings from Apple related to this headset. So the report says this, a few job listings indicate that Apple is ramping up its work to bolster the device with content. The company is searching for a software producer with experience in visual effects and game asset pipelines who can create digital content for augmented and virtual reality environments. The listings also imply that Apple is looking to build a video service for the headset featuring 3D content that can be played in virtual reality. But the most interesting job listing from Apple is the one that mentions the development of a 3D mixed reality world, which suggests that Apple is working on a virtual environment that is similar to the metaverse, probably a direct competitor, I would imagine, to the metaverse. So it looks like Apple has a lot planned for this headset, and this will most definitely be a slow seller at first, but the potential here is massive 
And I, you know, I have to know, are you guys planning to buy this headset when it launches next year? Or would you rather just wait a couple of years or more until the price drops significantly and there are more, you know, apps and just more content in general available? I'm really curious to see what you guys think about Apple's mixed reality headset right now. And then let's talk about AirPods and how a recent study showed that they perform nearly just as well as prescription hearing aids. So a study from the journal iScience found that a sound amplification feature Feature on the AirPods helped adults with mild to moderate hearing loss hear speech nearly just as well as two prescription hearing aids. So Dr. Chang, who co-wrote this study, said this, they won't replace hearing aids, but it's a good way for people to experience what the world would be like if they could get some help an upgrade for their hearing. So during this study, 21 adults with mild to moderate hearing loss were given hearing tests while wearing Apple's AirPods with the live listen feature activated. They also took the test while wearing a basic pair of hearing aids and a premium set of hearing aids. And they reported the best experience coming from the premium hearing aids that cost $10,000. However, the AirPods Pro performed almost just as well and the AirPods 2 performed notably worse. The AirPods Pro met standards in four of five categories, while the AirPods 2 met criteria for two categories in a sound and clarity test. The AirPods Pro surpassed the ideal threshold for internal noise levels to assist wearers in distinguishing between softer sounds and speech. So this is just awesome, and yet another reason why those with very mild hearing loss would benefit greatly from AirPods, especially if they're not looking to break the bank. So we've probably all beta tested iOS software at some point, and many of us have probably reported bugs via the feedback application just to find out that none of our issues got fixed in a timely manner. Well, Craig Federici just recently admitted that Apple's beta programs do not provide the interaction and influence that everybody, all of us users, desire. So according to Mac Rumors and an email exchange from one of their readers, Federici responded to a complaint that Apple's beta program does not effectively listen to user feedback and suggestions, noting the challenge Apple faces when literally millions of people participate in our betas and many, many, many of them want to provide feedback to help influence Apple's products. And it continued by saying, I agree that the current approach isn't giving many in the community what they'd like in terms of interaction and influence. We haven't yet figured out how to achieve that in a practical and constructive way. We'll keep thinking. So... This is pretty vague, but I mean, at least he's aware of this ongoing issue. And I hope this leads to more interaction for user reported issues and requests instead of just only replying when there's backlash or major press on a feature or a big bug. And then finally, what would you pay for your idol's worn sandals? $100? $1,000? Well, one person spent over $200,000 for the worn Birkenstocks of Steve Jobs. Yes, seriously, but it came with an NFT, so it's worth it, right? The shoes, which were expected to sell for up to $80,000, blew away all expectations when it sold for $218,750 after 19 bids were made. So crazy. The description also mentions that Jobs would wear this particular pair of sandals in the 1970s and 1980s, and that they were previously owned by Mark Sheff, the house manager to Steve Jobs. That is just absurd. Although I guess these would make for a nice exhibit in a museum, but that's about the only way I can see these being worth that much money. So there you have it. That is the latest batch of Apple news from this past week, along with some updates on the latest iOS 16 features and changes. Again, if you would like to get your hands on this new wallpaper pack called Velvet. I will leave a link down in the description below where you can get it, or you can always become a member to get all of my wallpaper packs for free. I really appreciate your guys' support on these wallpaper packs. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, as always, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss next week's Apple Weekly episode. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.